Can you photograph the Orion Nebula with a little Celestron Trophoscope 70 with no eyepiece, with no diagonal, no motor drive, no EQ mount, with just a one second exposure and still bring out the colours? I feel a challenge coming on. Uh, as you'll probably notice, this is not the tripod that you get with the travel scope, uh, which is okay for visual use. Uh, this is uh, 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 an AZ mount uh, for astronomy, but an, any very sturdy photographic tripod will do the same job, uh, uh, the best you can afford. And so what I've already done, I put a, a T ring on here, and. The images that I took were actually with a Canon uh, 6D full frame camera, which I can't demonstrate at the moment because you're looking through it now. So just for demonstration purposes, I've got an old film camera here just to show you how it works. And so I put the T ring for a Pentax K on there, red dot to red dot, click. You, you may have to alter it a little bit to get it to the right orientation, but that is pretty much it. That is the scope on a sturdy tripod t-ring the camera and so now what I'll do is I will talk you through the camera settings and some little hints and tips along the way. Uh, something I forgot to mention earlier was uh, anyone that knows where I live the the skies are very heavily light polluted and so that added to the challenge and uh, this by the way is a slash on travel scope 70 but the same setup and uh, techniques and camera settings applies to to, to most uh, short tube refractor telescopes, this one being a 400mm uh, f5.7 in effect. And uh, and uh, when, when it comes to looking through the viewfinder, it, it will show us f0.0. That's just because it is not a camera lens, but it, it will be f5.7 with this uh, lens attached. And so, first of all, we need to focus on the star. Don't look through the eyepiece, use live view and uh, magnified live view. Get the star in the centre, zoom right into it and what you're looking for is a very, very small point of light. And not, not large, uh, getting larger because that means you're going more and more out of focus. Just get to that little point of light and then on the top of a lot of uh, spotting uh, telescopes there's this little screw here on the top and you can lock it into focus so it doesn't creep. Uh, under exposure and so to take the photograph don't just press the the shutter once you're all set I'll come on to the uh, ISO settings in a short while because that will cause a camera shake just that little you wouldn't think so but it does and uh, so put it on uh, if you've got a, a remote or a self a delayed self timer with this one it's a little bit breezy so I used a full 10 seconds delay and and also when it's taken the photograph I'll put my hand over the the camera eyepiece because that because if it's light polluted area light can actually stray into the eyepiece or onto the sensor and can actually affect the image uh, slightly and so you've got it uh, pointing uh, now at the Orion Nebula and I could actually see it very easily through the eyepiece you've got the focus you've got it set on one second exposure uh, uh, shutter time sorry and uh, I, I use 12,800 ISO. Now and that seems quite high and uh, with my older uh, 1100D that would cause a lot of noise but with the full frame 6D that I was using and a lot of modern mirrorless cameras well, uh, they uh, have excellent noise reduction and uh, what I used uh, afterwards processing was Canon's own uh, 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 software for, for processing images and reducing the noise even more, but not not too much, or I should soften the image uh, uh, too much. And uh, and also, I use raw files always with all of my astrophotography. Well, most of my photography, I use raw files because there, it, you can take acceptable JPEG images, but uh, there's certain amount you're limited to how much more detail you can extract. Uh, from an image if, with JPEG. So if you can, be brave and start using raw files. And so that is pretty much it. Uh, I got it uh, set up, uh, settings ready, uh, one second exposure, 12,800 ISO, uh, 
uh, by all means experiment with ISO and uh, took the photograph and you could see on the camera uh, straight away that you could see a lovely image of the Orion Nebula and other other objects in the night sky that I took at the same time and afterwards I used uh, something called uh, 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 Canon's uh, DPP uh, th their own editing software but uh, you may use Lightroom or whatever uh, just to help bring out that extra detail, reduce noise etc, adjust your colours and that is pretty much it, that is how with a, 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 a cheap little Saturn travel scope 70 but any short tube refractor will do the same job I could manage to get a photograph of Orion with just a one second exposure yes if I put it on an EQ mount I could have a much longer exposure but this was all about giving myself a challenge not everybody can afford a, a driven mount and so basically just with this setup uh, uh, a nice sturdy tripod you can do this give it a try and so thank you very much uh, I hope this video helps uh, get you outside take some photographs and uh, yes there is more to look at in the night sky than the moon Jupiter and Saturn and to photograph them so thanks again and I'll see you next time